My friend Wayne Dyer many years ago said, hey Mary, squeeze an orange, what comes out? I said, well, that's not hard, orange juice. He says, but why? I said, I don't know, Wayne, why? Because that's what was in it all along. He says, you know, when life squeezes you, when life squeezes an individual you're working with, what comes out is what's been in there anyway. And for many people, what's in there is a sense of victimhood, a sense of blame, a sense of attack, a sense of self-loathing, all of the kind of energies that create contraction. He says, but guess what? What's in there, there's also a place in there that they have access to something that's more than the difficulty they're facing. So difficulty is inevitable. And when difficulty, extreme difficulty, comes into your life, what you do with it defines who you will be and how it will turn out for you. Oh, years ago, I heard a story about three salesmen in the United States who were traveling to the uh, center part of the country, uh, Heartland, because they were each salespeople for large equipment, uh, farm equipment, like the big, you know, combines. And, and they had a new piece of equipment that they were to learn how to sell. So the three of them were brought together and they were going to travel farm to farm learning how to sell this new piece of farm equipment, which was a healthy investment for the farmer. So they met, they got their rental car, and they headed out for their week's assignment about the different uh, farms they would go to. As it turned out, one of them was a Hindu. One of them was a Jew. And one of them was what we would call a negativist. That person worshiped literally at the altar of negativity. It didn't matter what was happening, they found something wrong. It didn't matter what was going on, they found something to complain about. The irritation level was heightened and rose as the days went on. That they, they found something wrong, they were critical, they were complaining, they were blaming. And this energy, by the fifth day, the other two, are so happy to be going, to delivering the last sales call, getting in their car and driving to the airport where they knew they could fly someplace far away from that guy. On the way between the last sales call and the airport, which was about 30 miles, about halfway, 5.30 in the afternoon, the, their car stops running. It just comes to a dead halt. And the one, the negative, is just erupts. He's all mad. We're going to miss our plane. This is horrible. This is the worst thing that could have happened. And then on and on. And the other two say, calm down. Look, out there across the field, there's a looks like a house of some kind. Maybe it's a farmer's house. Maybe it's got tools. Let's hike out over there. So they're hiking. He's complaining about how long the grass is and how bumpy the, 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 it is to find their way over to this house. They get to the house, knock on the door. An old farmer in his wonderful coveralls and overalls comes out and showing, showing a piece of a straw. He says, how you doing, boys? And they said, well, we, we've got a rental car out there. It broke down. We're rushing to get to the airport. Uh, is there anybody who can maybe look at the car and fix it? And he goes, oh, man, Sam. Sam's a guy who he owns the shop, and, I mean, he is a whiz. He'll know how to fix it, but ah, it's after 5. He closes at 5 promptly every Friday. He'll be back in the morning at 8. They're going, one guy's all upset, of course, and he says, the farmer says, but you know what? Mrs. and I, we have an extra bed here. It's got two twin beds in it, and we got a bunk in the barn. We can put you up for tonight, and she always makes plenty of food. Why don't you have dinner with us and spend the night, and tomorrow we'll get you on your way to the airport. Two of them are grateful, and this is back in the 70s this is occurring, and one of them is just erupting, still mad, upset. After dinner, they're getting ready to bed down, and the, the negative says, well, I'm not sleeping in the barn, I'm not going to sleep in the barn, and you know, the, the other two are looking at each other, and the Hindu says, it's okay, it's okay, I will sleep in the barn. So they bed down. Hindu goes out to the barn. About a half an hour later, knock, knock, knock at the door, and the one just erupts being awakened, and the two of them go to the door, and there's the Hindu. He says, guys, guys, I'm, I'm very, very sorry, but you see, in my tradition, it, it would not be okay to sleep with the sacred cow, and there is a sacred cow in the barn, so it, it's, it's not appropriate for me to sleep with the sacred cow. And the one's erupting, and he goes, I'm not going out there, and, and the, the Jew says, no problem, no problem, I will go out there. So they bed back down. About a half an hour later, knock, knock, knock at the door. And, wow, the negativist is all upset, and they get up, and they go to the door, and there's the Jew. He says, guys, guys, I'm very, very sorry, but you see, in my tradition, you know, there is a pig in the barn, and in my tradition, it would not be okay for me to sleep with a pig. It's, it's, it's not okay. And the negative says, forget it, I'm not going to get any sleep in here anyway, and he marches out, and he goes into the barn. They bed down. Half an hour later, knock, knock, knock at the door. The other two go to the door and open it. It's the cow and the pig. <laughs> I hope wherever you are in this moment, you, you're laughing right now. Because we have a little bit of all of that in us. 
You know, we have a part of ourselves that if we let it, will drag us right into negativity and complaining and blaming and irritation. And it's just part of our human nature. But you also have another side to your nature who can notice the irritation, notice the difficulty, notice the challenge that we're facing and decide who I'm going to be even in the presence of that challenge. You have within you a juncture between the finite part of your nature and the infinite part of your nature. Let the finite part of your nature represent your human life. The moment you were born, your birth date, and the moment you pass away, out in invisible ink, way out in the future, and in this moment, this here and now, you're in this intersection of your human journey. From the moment you took your first breath, from the moment you took your first breath, and all the way to when you take your last breath, you're being animated. This physical body is animated by the spirit of life itself, moving into and through us, and rises up in, in awareness and proclaims itself, I am. You get to say, I am, and then whatever you want to put underneath it and behind it and around it, you get to decide that. But that you are a being is not something you could make up. It's not something you could create. It's, not some, it's something that's given to every single one of us. What we do with that being and how we be is either a pattern that we were just handed and we just repeat the patterns we grew up in or something happens along the way and we begin to realize I am more than that pattern. I'm more than the way I was raised. I'm more than my hurt. I'm more than the difficulties I've faced. And I'm more than what I am facing right now.